Hello everyone, we are here today uh, with Mastery Volleyball Club and we uh, have the privilege of interviewing Lucas Van Berkel, a member of the Canadian men's national team. Uh, thank you so much Lucas for joining. Yeah, thanks for having me. Of course. Uh, so today I just kind of want to ask you some questions, learn kind of about your volleyball journey, uh, and of course the, the juiciest of it all to find out what playing in the Olympics in Tokyo is like. <laughs> Sounds um, good. So the fir uh, first and most important question, pre-game meal. What is your pre-game meal? Pre-game meal? Honestly, I've switched it up over the years. I used to be a cereal guy, and then I found that I got a little too heavy with the milk and all that. <laughs> Didn't make my stomach feel exactly too well. And then I went with sandwiches, um, okay. like specifically toasted sandwiches. I would usually do like an egg, some meat and stuff, and chicken, but then I felt later on that got a little too heavy. So now, honestly, I'm, I, my favorite pregame meal is toast with peanut butter and banana, as simple as that sounds. I don't like getting too heavy, but just enough to get me through and just feel good like that. So that's, that's been my pregame meal lately, at, at least. And like, how long has that been? Like, like lately as in like this summer? As in probably the beginning of last year. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, but I, I was mean, always a big pasta guy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, for sure. If it's, I can't eat that like a, this is more like an hour before I leave, maybe for the gym. Oh, like for okay. sure. If it's the yeah, night yeah. before, definitely that I like a big meal like that. But if it's like right before, I don't like eating too, too much. Okay. Yeah. That, that definitely makes sense. Yeah. You don't want to, don't want to almost throw up while you're warming up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, but totally. I mean, when you're on the road with, with a team and stuff, sometimes you don't really have a choice. So you just get sure. whatever, whatever they serve you and you kind of deal with it. But you yeah, just, totally. I like something kind of simple like that. For sure, that totally makes sense. So, so like looking back when you started uh, your career, why why volleyball? Was it you know what your parents threw you into? I'm sure you had lots of basketball. Uh, well, people begging you to play basketball. Yeah, not well, not a ton of that. I mean, I played in high school. Um, I'd never played club or anything like that. Um, I was never like amazing at basketball of course the height helps and stuff so i had some people talk to me about that but it was nothing too serious for me um mm -hmm. but volleyball like well a little fun fact about me my parents actually met each other at a church league um volleyball team so they were on the same team just got put together and stuff and that's how they met so Maybe wow. it was a little destined for me to, to play volleyball, but um, wow. yeah, just a fun fact for you guys. Um, but honestly, I knew nothing about club volleyball. My parents knew nothing. My siblings knew nothing. Um, we were actually a big, big soccer family growing up. Uh, oh, yeah. Even today is like probably the main sport within the family. Um, so growing up, I played soccer my whole life. Um, I would play other sports as well, but... I would, I pretty much, I started in club soccer, um, probably at the age of eight or something, eight or seven, like wow. really young. And then just kind of worked my way up with that. Um, as soon as junior high hit, I played other sports, like the school sports, like the basketball, um, volleyball, badminton, <clears throat> track and field and all that. And that was all fun and everything. But I was like, still in my head, it was like soccer is my main focus. Um, but then I got to grade nine and I actually got cut from the soccer team. So I was like, oh no, like what do I do now? And then um, I started with junior high volleyball and like my siblings had all done that. It was fun. Um, so of course I would try to. And then one of my, one of my best friends, his brother had um, been a part of a club volleyball team too. And he's like, and so my friend is like, oh man, we got to do this too. Like, I know this club we can go join and everything like that. So like, would you do it? So I was like, oh yeah, sure. Why not? Like I'm not playing soccer right now. I was playing for like the second division team. I was like, yeah, I'll try volleyball. I, I really enjoy, enjoy junior high volleyball and all that. Um, so yeah, we did that. And then I made that team and then it went like, okay. It wasn't a great club or anything like that. Um, but it was still fun. I enjoyed myself. And then the year after that, um, we started researching more for other clubs in Edmonton. And we, um, yeah, so we found a bigger, better club that we both went to and, and we made the team there and we just kind of, kind of kept going with that, with the club volleyball system. And, um, 
yeah, sure enough, I just like every year, I was like, okay, maybe I'll do, keep doing it again. Yeah, it's going well. Mm. Let's keep going with it, see how far we can go. And then it's taken me all the way here now. <laughs> wow. Holy. Yeah. I yeah, mean, pretty, I, pretty I always well. thought I had a late, uh, a late start, but I mean, you were just as late as me. And I mean, here you are coming out of the Olympics. That's crazy to me. Yeah. So yeah, um, so I guess my first club experience was grade nine. Yeah. So pretty late, in, wow. especially now. Yeah. That's crazy. And like it, when you started in grade nine, like how tall were you at that point? Um, I'm going to say I was probably six, seven, I would say. So pretty tall still. Yeah. Yeah. I was a, I was a pretty nine. big boy. Oh, okay. Maybe I would say six, 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 six. I probably grew oh, three inches still. in high school. Wow. That's wild. But still, I think that must have been still. a dream come true for the evaluators. Yeah. 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 They're like, you know what? We can teach volleyball. We can't teach height. So you're, you're okay. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Yeah. Isn't that the freaking truth? My goodness. <laughs> uh, and then, so then you just came up playing volleyball and like, at what point did you, I guess, specialize in like, this is what I'm doing now? Um, I think the turning point for me was, um, I was in grade 10 and then I got invited to team Alberta camp and I was like, what the heck? Like, do they really think I'm good enough to play team Alberta? And, um, so like, I mean, I heard about it in soccer and everything, but it was like always such a, oh man, that's only like the top of the top people. Like it was like a dream of mine. Yeah. And then to hear that I could be, well, cause you had to get invited to the selection camp. Yeah. So I got invited to totally. that. And I was kind of like, whoa, this is crazy. And so then I went to it and then I made the team. And then I was like, still in my head, I was like, okay, I'm not good enough. But then I started and stuff. And it's just kind of like step by step. I was like almost doubting myself. But then people are like, no, like yeah. you could actually do this. Like you could probably go somewhere with volleyball. And I was like, you know, like <laughs> what's, what does volleyball, like I'm just starting this. Like I just yeah. playing it because it's fun. I'm tall. It's good. And then I didn't really think too much about it, but then I think after every year, I was like, oh, maybe I can take it a little bit further. Ooh, what's actually next? Because I didn't know at the point. I was like, okay, what's after provincial team? Is there, okay, I know yeah. there's university. Like, would that be a possibility for me? Could I do this, this? And then it just like, yeah, it just worked out. So kind of got lucky, but um, yeah, I don't know. It's, that's, it's that's, worked out so far. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. I, I find it so fun. Just like, so you're just constantly along the way, like surprising yourself. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's yeah. funny. And especially cause I mean, I, I didn't grow up with a lot of friends who played volleyball or anything like that. Like I was pretty much the first one in my family to really take volleyball to the next level. And so I'm just yeah. figuring all these things out as I go. And I'm like, okay, this is pretty cool, I guess. <laughs> That's crazy. That's absolutely crazy. Yeah. I mean, even in our family, we were always basketball and uh, we had like one friend who played volleyball and it kind of just opened the floodgates. Yeah. That's crazy though. It's so funny how, how you can find a sport like that when like, there's almost nothing actually leading you there except that like one little instant. Yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah. It's, I don't know, pretty fortunate, but uh, yeah, I mean, someone's got to be the first one to do it, I guess. That's right. That's right. So then from high school, you went to Trinity Western for five years. Uh, give me like, just kind of, if you were to boil down your five years at Trinity Western, like what, how would you kind of sum that up in terms of like what you learned, how you, I guess, grew up and like how it grew or how it rather took your aspirations uh, to the next kind of milestones? Yeah, totally. Well, I mean, as a lot of people can, um, can agree with that a high school to university or college is a big step, both personally and yeah and physically as well so i mean that was pretty crazy i mean i grew up from, in edmonton and then moved to bc so it was just my first time leaving home like that um so yeah i learned i learned a ton about myself um about volleyball about kind of the next professional what professional volleyball looked like um cis at the time it was it's U sports now but at the time it was cis um it just kind of like it was a big jump from club volleyball with how you take care of your body, how you totally um, game plan against other teams like that. So that was something I never really experienced before. So just a lot of professionalism that I was like, whoa, mm -hmm. like, okay, this seems like a legit 
routine kind of thing. Like I've just been showing up to the gym half an hour before yeah. and like tying my laces and then going and playing five games in one day. So that was one just having fun. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just like a lot of the, a lot of that stuff that I actually learned about the sport and what it takes to be a professional and what the next level looks like. So in a nutshell, yeah. I was like, that was a, that was a big, big um, eye opening experience for me. Totally. And so throughout like your five years at Trinity, like when did, when did the national team become like a prospect or even a consideration for you? Um, so in my first, at the end of my first year of university, that's the first year of the junior national team. So when I was going up in the ranks, we didn't have youth national team, which I believe they do now and, and they still do. Yeah. Um, so how it worked was we trained all summer with the provincial teams. And then at the end of the, there's a, at the end of the summer, there's a tournament with all the provincial teams. And there's also a selection process for the junior national team. So they look, they watch the whole tournament and then they pick the team from that tournament. And so going into that summer, I knew that was a possibility. And um, my coach at Trinity told me like, obviously informed me and stuff. And I mean, we'd be doing drills and he's like, you know what? Like, I really think you'll, you'll make this team and you can make this team. And like, I want to help you help get you there. And um, everything like that. And, and still, I mean, I was still in shock about provincial teams at the time, never mind national teams. So I was like, okay, like, is this really a thing? I guess so. I'll, I'll like, I'll just kind of do what you guys say and hopefully it takes me there, I guess. Like, it sounds pretty cool. And so, um, yeah, so like another funny story is on our provincial team, we had three like really good middles and we were rotating in the tournament of who would play. And I was like, oh, this isn't good. Like, there's no way they're going to take three of us. Like, they're only going to see, like, the two starters in the final game. And they'll, like, be like, okay, those are the two best guys. Yeah. So it somehow worked that all three middles from Team Alberta made the junior national team. And I was like, oh, this is crazy. Like, I thought I was competing against my teammates for that spot. And all three of us made it. It was, like, the best day ever. That's crazy. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I mean, that, that first year of my university is probably the real time uh, like the national team kind of popped in my head and thought it was like an actual possibility for me mm -hmm. yeah and then so then from there you just kind of followed the volleyball canada kind of path into like into the uh b team into the a team or if they're still the b and a teams but like you just kind of followed the path into those kind of areas yeah yeah exactly so okay yeah yeah yeah, we had two years of junior team and then I was on B team for four or five years. And then I kind of cracked my first time on the A roster just after I graduated or no, going into my oh, fifth yeah. year, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then, so having spent that much time on the national team, I mean, I, I'm sure the Olympics or the idea of the Olympics popped into your head a couple times. Like at what point... Did it become this, like, this is the goal, like, this is what I'm chasing after? Yeah, well, I mean, another fun story, just kind of backtrack a bit. So going into my grade 12 year, um, we had a new teacher coming to our school, a math teacher, and he was a really physical, like, athletic guy. And um, we had, like, the beginning of the year um, assembly. And he comes up to me, he's like, hey, I heard you play volleyball, like, um, like are you going to go to the Olympics? And I like laughed it off. I was like, no chance. And like, <laughs> as, as you're kind of, you guys are kind of learning, like I just had doubted myself the whole time. And it's like, no For way, sure. like, like Olympics, like that's, I mean, I watch these people on TV. They're like, of course that's yeah. a dream, but that's not a realistic dream for me. And so it was kind oh. of like that. And then um, still to this day, my buddies were around me when that happened. And still to this day, we laugh about it because we're like, oh man, like remember that time when, yeah, the, the teacher said that and you laughed it off and now like look at you like you actually went to the Olympics <laughs> so that was the that was the first time like the Olympics really popped in my head um even in even in junior junior national team when I made the team like of course that was a possibility but it almost seemed so far in the distance that I was like oh like yeah that would be amazing but you know what so many things have to go right um sure. I think maybe near the end of my university career, I was like, okay, you know what? I want to pursue volleyball further. And 
my main goal is to make the Olympics. So going into my fourth and fifth year, I was like, you know what? I want to keep going with volleyball. This is amazing. Mm -hmm. I think I can really do it if I just keep going. Um, so like, yeah, I mean, I was Rio was in 2016. I knew it was going to be like a really, really tough um, situation for me to make. I mean, but at that time, that was still my goal. I was like, you know what? I want to try to crack this Rio 2016 roster. It probably won't work, but you know what? Let's give it our, give it our all. Unfortunately, it didn't work out. And then I was mm -hmm. like, you know what? I have to do 2020. Like that's the real realistic goal for me. I think I'm like lined myself perfectly for that. Um, both like age wise, maturity wise and all that. So yeah, long story short, I don't know. It, it popped in my head early on, probably midway through university near the end and then became like a realistic goal probably 2014 or so okay yeah yeah i mean that's a just thinking if i like to put myself in your shoes just to try and like have a goal and then pursue it for that amount of time yeah honestly seems insane to me not insane as in you're out of your mind but like that blows my mind that you had the mental like fortitude to pursue something for such a long time oh, i yeah. mean so many people burn out so fast totally totally because I mean, I mean you know people want things as soon as possible and that is not an as soon as possible kind of no it was pursuit, that's yeah. for sure definitely a long-term goal and i mean so many things had to go right i mean we had to qualify yeah. had to make the roster had to do this had to stay healthy and yeah, yeah, I mean, like, um, like Holly, my wife, obviously, as you know, <laughs> your sister, <laughs> um, I mean, our, we, every decision we made for our pro seasons was leaning towards making the Olympics. I mean, that was my, pretty much my only focus for volleyball. This is what yeah. I really wanted to come out of volleyball is the main goal was to make the Olympics. And so for it to happen, you're like, oh, like just a breath of fresh air that it, that it actually worked out. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. Uh, so speaking of the all of those things that have to go right, what was it like? Try if you could unpack a bit of what it was like to deal with the will I, won't I, of especially when it was kind of coming down to it of going to the Olympics. Like I, I know that it was kind of a stressful thing for you guys. Of like you're so close, but like you might not. Right. Like, what was that like? Yeah, I mean, it was stressful <laughs> to put in one word. Nice. Um, well, like to first off start with, um, like I, I said earlier, <clears throat> just to qualify for the Olympics is such like a hard thing to do. Um, so our first qualifier, we lost against Argentina. So we had to finish first in our pool and we finished second. <clears throat> and then um, our second qualifier, we ended up coming back from two sets down to um, Cuba and we won in five. So that was like just the three right. in itself to, to qualify. And then the next thing is um, usually we travel with 14 players for any kind of competition, but the Olympics, we were only mm. about 12. So then mm. we had to figure out, well, okay, there's going to be two people that are normally with the team all the time that will make the Olympics. So that was like, yeah, it comes with a lot of stress and especially <clears throat> leading up to it. Um, I mean, every game you play, you put so much pressure on yourself because you're, it's kind of like a tryout almost like leading totally. into it and they're going to take the best people or the, the guys that are playing the best at the time, which makes yeah. sense. So, I mean, you're like, okay, this summer before at nation's league was like almost like a trial to see where people are at, who's like ready to play at the Olympics kind of thing. So, um, yeah, I mean, it comes with a lot of stress, a lot of just pushing yourself, but still being confident. Um, confidence is key. I mean, once you start doubting yourself, that's okay. when you're in trouble. Like you have to be just be acting like you deserve to be there, um, that you're the best guy for the job kind of thing. Like any kind of, any kind of job interview, you just got to come in co with confidence, play well, totally. and just believe that you deserve to be there. So, I mean, I worked with um our team has a mental strength coach and i've worked with him for the past few years now just to get to this point and i would wow. say that's helped me a ton too just with my internal thoughts and have you guys have probably um learned by now i had a lot of self-doubt leading to that so that he's helped me with that and everything like that um so yeah it's yeah kind of hopefully that answered the question a bit yeah definitely 
What, what, so for you, dealing with some of that self-doubt, is it kind of a uh, fake it till you make it idea or was there something that needed to click for you to actually be confident? Um, I think it started with fake it till you make it. Um, yeah. Yeah, it definitely did. But um, I'm trying to think what a lot of people ask me. They're like, so what was like the turning point for you or whatever? And you know sure. what? I was like, you know what? It just, I don't know. It all just came together at one point where I think all this hard work just like finally like made the perfect clash together in a way. Totally. And I don't know. It was, yeah, like another another thing people have also said at the Olympics, they're like, man, like your energy was crazy. And almost, <laughs> almost yeah. is like a little bit of the faking to you make it, but it wasn't because that's really how I felt at the time. But I yeah. know I played way better when I was just like emotional, just like going crazy, just, I don't know, trying to get the teammates hyped and stuff. So yeah. there, like is a little bit of faking, but like most of that was like my emotion at the time. And I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to let it all out. And then sure enough, it made myself play better. I hope it made my teammates play better. And so, and, but, and then I felt more confident too, just talking to people, yeah. just being involved in the game. And then that also got me out of my own thoughts in my head. If things weren't going right, you know, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to keep talking to the guys and like in yeah. a positive way. And you just, it helps you forget about the mistakes a lot quicker and um, yeah yeah so it was something that i kind of learned especially in the past couple of years but that was yeah i think it starts at, at almost the fake it till you make it but then it becomes second nature in the in the future oh, and it's yeah it's worked out well and especially uh i mean at when you get to the point that you're at where you know you're not thinking about hitting a ball you're not thinking as much about like how your hands are when you're blocking then you can just afford to just let it all out yeah, because yeah. you have put in all of that work beforehand to hammer out all of the, you know, fundamentals and things like that. Yeah. And cause I know that like in my past, I sometimes would become a little bit wild right. when I, when my emotions would get high because I wasn't quite refined that much. Right. Um, but yeah, that's, that's um, that's unreal that you were able to get to that point and be able to just have that release, and at the Olympics, no less. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so the other thing you had mentioned, um, what with you know all the things going right, uh, was being healthy. How was it uh, trying to manage or to handle you know the injuries and even just the general aches and pains over so many years playing pro? to then lead up to the Olympics? Yeah, uh, no, that's a good question. I mean, I actually ended up, so in my first year of university, um, I was having really big knee pain and I had no idea what was going on. Didn't understand, got checked out, physios couldn't really understand. So I went to a knee specialist and I had like these bone chips in my knee. Um, and so it's actually called, the diagnosis is called osteochondritis dissecans. So pretty much what it is, is yeah, long, long term, but uh, what it is, is like, yeah, just cartilage breaking off. And so it got to the point where I had no more cartilage left. And I mean, the cartilage, cartilage acts as a cushion. Um, so there was no cushion in my joints. So all the impact was going straight on my bones. Um, so I had one surgery where they took out the cartilage and we were hoping that was enough, but that wasn't enough. So luckily that was only like a couple week recovery. So I had to do another one um, where essentially they like drilled into my knee cap bone so that uh, new stem cells would grow and, and promote like, um, yeah, new like cartilage in a way. Um, so yeah, so that they did that and I was out for I think six months completely. Or like I was uh, maybe on crutches for two and then by the time I was back and playing it was within six months. Um, so yeah, that was a big recovery and that was the summer going into the junior national team. So that, that happened in January of my first year. So I did play the whole second semester and then just got back in time for the summertime. Um, so luckily I was, I was back for, for provincial team and national team. So that worked out, but, um, yeah, kind of going to in pro and, uh, and national team for keeping care of your body. I mean, that's such a pivotal thing that people overlook. 
Um, I mean, your body is your tool. It's what's <laughs> what gets you the job pretty much. So you need to stay, stay healthy and clubs need to know that you're healthy and um, and the national team wants to know that you're healthy as well. So um, it takes a lot of like, fortunately with the national team and clubs, <clears throat> you get um, physios and, and the help you need. But a lot of the time, I mean, you need to do stuff on your own. So a lot of time, especially these past couple of years, I've been doing stretching at home, um, working with separate coaches, getting me on like hip programs, um, just everything like that. So which t helps take tension off my knees, um, everything like, yeah, just I would start doing yoga, which I'd never done before, but just to get me like more nimble and loose and just more. And I mean, it helps me with injury, but also helps me move better, which obviously in volleyball you need to move well so sure. um yeah fortunately i haven't been too injury prone except for the knee thing um but i mean it's little things also like heading into the olympics i felt a little banged up and i remember talking to my sports um psych guy being like man i can't believe like i finally made it here and now that i'm here and i like i'm not feeling great like come on like what like what can i do to like help me get past this and he's like you know what honestly like you're not the only one who's feeling like this right now. Like so many people are going through it and it's just kind of how you push through it and how you use it and um, like not dwell on it. And like, obviously a lot more was put into those words and everything like that. And I was like, Hey, you know, what? I can't focus on it. I did everything I could up to this point and it is what it is and just go with it. So um, yeah, luckily it got better as the tournament went on as well too. But a huge part that people don't realize is the body care that need, that comes out of the 20 minutes of stretching after practice kind of thing. Yeah, I know, it, especially even in my career that like, when I didn't take care of my body, I, you know, I could make it through two, three days of practice in the week. And then by the time I'm on at matches on the weekend, I'm falling apart yeah. versus when you're taking disciplined care of yourself, like it is, it really is like half of the battle and to like you said i think everyone overlooks it so so much totally um now i mean obviously you said a lot about how a lot of things kind of lined up a lot of things clicked for you but i'm sure that you still had a few failures along the way whether it's losing a big game or maybe losing out on an opportunity not getting the team that you wanted whatever it may be how have you personally managed to cope with those kinds of failures or uh, how do you want to? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I've definitely had my fair share of failures. Um, but yeah, like a negative thing with me that I've really had to work on is, okay, getting out of my own head. Um, growing up and like still to this day i'm like really a perfectionist on the court like i don't say compliments too well because if someone gives me say they have a good game all i'm focusing on is like those two errors i made or that miss serve i did or whatever <laughs> like i can't get my mind out of that so that's not a good trait to have and that's something i definitely have to work on um but yeah like there's there's been a lots of lots of up and ups and downs um but i mean the thing that I've really resorted to is after failure is like, okay, I got to just work harder. Like I, that's when I really like start to buckle down and like, like, you know what, I got to do everything I can to, to make sure I'm better for the next opportunity that I get and not waste that opportunity. Um, but yeah, like, first of all, like when I didn't make that 2016 Rio team, um, of course that hurt. Um, okay. Maybe, I thought it would could be a realistic goal. Maybe others didn't, but still, that was my goal is to make that team, and it didn't work out. So I was like, "Okay, you know what? I just got to work hard for 2020, and that's that's my only focus." So, um, yeah, and then um, so the qualifiers for the Tokyo 2020, which happened in <clears throat> January of 2020, um, I actually didn't even I played a couple points the whole tournament. So we qualified, but I didn't play, and that's still. It, it wasn't a failure because we qualified, but for me personally, I it, I took that as a personal failure that I couldn't help the team on the court. And so I was like, you know what? I, I need to do everything I can to make sure I'm on that team, helping the team at the Olympics. 
And I mean, I had talks with the, with the coaches when um, I made the selection and and the meeting, and they they asked me like, okay, so like what what happened? Like what clicked? And I've been getting that that question a lot. But you know, I was like, you know what? I wanted to be at this meeting and say that I gave it my all and have no regrets if I made the team or if I didn't make the, make the team. And I was like, you know what? I couldn't have put anything else on the floor or the extra hours off the court. You know what? This is it. And if I don't make the team, I'll still hold my head up high and be like, you know what? I, I did all that I could. It just wasn't meant to be. And so that's what I said. And mm -hmm. I, I really believe that's what I did. So definitely my biggest attribute was, um, I would say my work ethic. Um, just, yeah, that's, that's what's got me here. Of course, it's nice being tall, but I mean, at this level, everyone's tall. So it takes a little bit more. And I was like, I just got to work harder than everyone else. And I, I would say that's been my biggest, my biggest plus. So along with your work ethic, um, what would you say is one other, like, what is one of the other most important pieces that have helped you in your development throughout the years? Yeah. Um, well, now that going back on to this, these past couple of years, especially, but just the confidence, um, mm. just playing, playing with confidence, like knowing that you're the best guy out there, you're the best guy for the job. And it's crazy how powerful the mind is. And as soon as you go, go in your own head and are timid, that's how your play will be. You're not contacting the ball the same that oh, you yeah. will. You're overthinking everything. And I mean, volleyball is played at such a fast pace that you don't have time to think about, oh, this is where my feet should be or this is where my contact. It's just like, it almost has to come naturally to you. And it's like second nature. And so once you're playing with confidence, you, you overthink those or you don't overthink those things and you're just, it's just second nature and you're just playing and um, it just all of a sudden clicks and, and comes to you. So I wish I could have played with that confidence more growing up, but especially in the past few years, um, I would say that's been like a big, a big help in my game. Yeah, I can definitely see that. I know. There was a, a hinging point even for me when I kind of found my confidence. And just like you said, it is, it just changes everything. And it's, it's, it's actually so remarkable how much of a difference it really does make. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so when you were at Tokyo, what would you say, if you had to pick anything, what was the funnest part about the Olympics? Like when you're, you know, 80 years old and you're reminiscing about the good old days, what are you going to remember the most? Um, the thing I'm going to remember the most is seeing those rings. I mean, that's <laughs> been, that's been the biggest like dream of mine is making the Olympics. And that's, I mean, that's all I've been like thinking about volleyball wise for the past 10 years. And coming off that, like, honestly, talking about it, I get a kind of goosebumps still, which is weird. <laughs> but, like, coming off the plane, seeing those rings in the airport, and especially going on the volleyball court the first time and seeing them on the floor, I was like, you know what? This is going to be, like, ingrained in my mind for, for a lifetime. Of course, it's nice seeing those athletes, those, like, NBA stars and everything, those track stars and all that. But, I mean you're there to play volleyball and the, I mean, that's the reason why, why you're there and why you dreamed of being there and stuff. So that, I mean, that was just like, you know what? Okay. Finally it's here kind of thing. And going to the service line and like kind of walking across mm -hmm. it and seeing a peripheral, you're like, okay, like this is actually happening. Like sometimes like <laughs> you're like, okay, someone pinch me, please. No. Cause I want to, I want to stay here. Yeah. Uh, and then what was, if, if anything, what was the weirdest thing that happened that you saw? I mean, Tokyo is very different, or Japan in general is very different culturally than North America, of course. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is kind of given, but obviously the weirdest thing was the corona situation. Ah, um, uh, yes. But trying to go for, like, a less obvious answer. Um, the weirdest thing. That's a good question. I'm going to say, I don't know what was weird. 
that. Or maybe just unique, but not, it just like a remarkable thing that wasn't necessarily like fun or exciting. Yeah. Um, but it was just like something that stuck out, if anything. I mean, <laughs> COVID is a pretty yeah, unique. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a big one. Um, what really stuck out was the heat. I mean, people talked oh, about gosh. how hot, apparently it was the hottest Olympics in history, which is like surprising. I mean, you wouldn't think that about Tokyo, but it was like so humid, over like 40 every day. Like it was just like crazy, like walking to the cafeteria and you'd just be sweating right away. So that was, that was pretty like, I don't know how the, how the outdoor athletes competed in that. Like that's oh. astonishing. I'm, we're lucky we had air conditioned in some indoor courts. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. I, oh my gosh. I can't even imagine walking into a gym. Well, like the gym was 40 degrees or outside? No, outside, outside. <laughs> okay. Outside was not inside, no. No. <laughs> that would be excessive. Yeah, no, no, exactly. Um, so kind of uh, looking at your overall uh, career, um, the the things that obviously get you there are the daily, you know, as as lame as it is to talk about, it's the daily grind, the daily grind, you know, just coming in, the the aggregate of marginal gains. Um on that daily basis, dealing with the daily grind, like how how have you managed to keep going through it? Um, just really realizing what my goal was. I mean, my goal was to make the Olympics. And as cheesy as it sounds, like you hear all these videos of if you're not working hard, someone else is working harder than you. Kind of like if you're not up, if you're up at seven, someone's up at six. You know <laughs> those kind of videos. But I don't know. It's, um. Yeah, that's kind of what, like, it's not what helped me, but that just, like, kept me going. And I was like, you know what? This is my goal. I just want to, like, like I said earlier, I want to put everything on the table right now so that by the end of this year or whatever, how long it's been, that I could be like, you know what? I gave it my all, and that's it. And so that was, like, I just never wanted to be like, what if? What if I did this a little bit more? What if I worked on my serving a little bit harder or what if I like, yeah, just those kind of things. And I was like, no, I can't, I can't live with myself if I'm, if I end up being like that. So yeah, I just, I was like, you know what, I'm going to do everything I can. And Holly was, was amazing. She's like, whatever you need, supplies, whatever, specific training, coaching, just do it. And we'll worry about whatever later. And just, yeah, whatever you need to do, let's just do it and just do everything you can to, to make this dream of yours. So it was just full on, all like full steam ahead commitment to it. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I have one last question for you. I think it's the most important thing we could possibly talk about. <laughs> all right. I know you've played with both, Molten or Macassas? Macassa, 100%. But but I'm also yeah, mostly I'm, a, I'm mostly a float server, so I mean the moltens <laughs> yeah. don't really I mean spiking warm up for sure the molten. For me as a float server majority, Mikasa. Yeah. Yeah, after I mean I played in the college league, so I played with moltens a lot, and I gotta say, once I uh, went back to Mikasa, it was a heck of an adjustment for me. Yeah. But I would definitely say the same. It's uh Macassas, Really? Even as a spin server? Wait, oh yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I just find Macassas are so much more responsive of a ball. Uh even if they are a little trickier. Yeah. But yeah. Well, Lucas, thank you so much for doing this. Uh I really appreciate it. I know uh I won't be the only person who appreciates it. Yeah. So yeah, thanks. Of course. Um and for all of uh, the viewers out there, um, I hope you guys enjoy this. And uh, I, all I have left to say is good luck on the court and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Also, I just wanna add, if anyone has a question or if they wanna reach out, feel free to contact myself or anyone and we'd love to help and chat and just talk whatever. There it is, that's an open invitation. All right, thanks, All right, thanks so much, Pete.